Okay. Uh, this talk was meant to be done by Alberto Planas, but he was not able to attend finally to the conference, so I will try to, uh, to explain the subject. Uh, I'm sure it's not the same, you know, the original is always the original, but I'll do my best. So, uh, here is the fast and short version, in case you want to leave to go to another talk, or simply because this talk is the last for today, so. Um, uh, first of all, this talk is uh, focused on contributing to OpenQA like a tool. I mean, it's tied to developers that really want to code on, on, the, tool, on, on the tool itself. If you are more interested in, in writing new tests for OpenQA, for, for example, for improving the test coverage of your own package, or simply you are sick and tired of watching some recurring bug reappearing once in a while, and there will be a workshop about really writing test cases to be run on OpenQA. That will be on Sunday by Ludwig at 1 p.m., I think. So uh, this, is, this introduction is about the OpenQA tool itself. So uh, if nobody leaves, I will assume that he's interested in it. So uh, first thing he will, mm, he will need to do is to go to GitHub. Uh, we have an OS auto -inst, uh, organization on GitHub where all the repositories related to, to OpenQA are. So just grab the code. Is paired code, everything OpenQA is written in pair, even the tests. Uh, we use several libraries or frameworks, especially for the server side, we use Mojolicious, which is a really nice pair framework for web development. So, and we have a, in progress.opensource.org our red mine for coordinating uh, with we, we our team and also other teams. We have a project called OpenQA v2. You just go there, there's a lot of open issues, tasks, which seems that needs to be developed or bugs and everything. Uh, we, within the team, we try to uh, work using development sprints. So we deliver something new every two weeks. So if you go there, you will see uh, a spring six, a spring seven, or whatever is the number of the spring we are currently working on with a list of issues already assigned to, the, to that sprint. But you will also see some kind of timeless version, a timeless milestone called Easy Hacks. And this is where we assign all those tasks that we would like to have fixed or implemented or whatever, but we are not focusing on it right now. So that will be a perfect starting point if you really want to do something, in, improve something in OpenQA. Of course, you are free to implement whatever you want, but if you simply are, are simply looking for an easy task to get introduced to the code and everything, just look for the easy hacks uh, milestone version there and pick one, fix it, implement whatever is needed, and just create a pull request and, and GitHub and you are done. And of course, even more important, half of the team that is developing OpenQA right now is here in the conference. So the even faster way will be just approach us, approach me, Ludwig, Kulo, uh, Christopher, uh, Michal, and that's all. From now on, I will simply repeat this, but slowly with more de go of all kind of gory detail with the URLs and everything. So, and if I'm going to start from the beginning, let's do it properly, explaining what OpenQA is. Um, I guess that you all know because you are here in this talk, but OpenQA is the tool we use to test OpenSUSE installation process. It's in fact not bound to OpenSUSE in any way. You can, it's a generic tool for testing operating systems. Uh, the idea is that we have a, a small component called OS AutoInst that can take an ISO image and also a hard disk, several hard disk images and follow some instructions about what needs to be tested. For example, it it creates a virtual machine, introduce the CD into the unit, and for example, press crease, uh, down three uh, until you see the install to hard disk option highlighted, and then press enter, and then wait for the welcome to the installation screen to appear. If it doesn't appear, 
that's the test as a failure. It's done. If it appears, next steps will be to choose this option or the other option, and so on. Uh, all those tests are written in pair also, and uh, they can change the behavior depending on some configuration. Those configurations are read from environment variables. And uh, that's only the OS auto ins component that does a very specific job. And then we have OpenQA that really uh, runs all this uh, process of installation, checking for the result, for a lot of combination of, uh, for example, installing the distribution with KD of with Genome, with uh, different layout in the partitioning, using LBM, uh, with UEFI, uh, Secure Boot, uh, and all the combination between. So having different file system on different uh, partitioning schemes or on different hardware, whatever. So it, it's a lot of combination for each ISO we publish or we want no, that is that goes out of the OBS, maybe not to the download servers, just out of the OBS, and we decide depending on the result if it will go to the download servers. And uh, so the whole architecture looks uh, like this, more or less. Uh, there is a server, this server side with this gray there is the it provides both the web UI and the REST API. And there is a database there where all the jobs that needs to be run, all the tests that are pending or that that are, have been already executed and the results are there. That's the server that coordinates everything. And then we have several workers running all the time in parallel. Uh, a worker is a piece of code that is always running, um, always asking to the server through the, this REST API, do you want me to run some test? Yes. Take this ISO image, run it with this special configuration, okay. And what the worker does is uh, filling a directory. Every worker has its own pool directory where it puts everything that OS auto, in, auto in needs to run. It sets the environment variables that OS auto is will use to decide which option to click or what to consider a fail or whatever and then it runs OS Anto in itself. So this is the OpenQA package. It's a different repository in GitHub and it's also a different package in, in OBS. And then it comes into play OS auto ins that is uh, another package. It's in the same project. We usually say yes, OpenQA to, to, and we refer to the whole scene, but they are in fact two different parts that simply runs once get the result back to the pool directory and the worker from the pool directory to the server and so goes on all the time. So now I can see in your, la in your eyes that you are already willing to start coding on this marvelous piece of code. So that's what you should learn before. Um, of course, you should know pair because everything in OpenQA is pair. There is, uh, document they are in, on internet that claims that can teach you pair in two hours and a half. And Alberto looks to um, trust on it because he wrote the URL on the, on the slides. If you already know pair, you can save two hours and a half of your life. If not, it's worth a try. And, and then you also will need to know the libraries or the frameworks we are using. And the server side, this gray part, we're using Mojolicious, which is a, a web development framework that looks and feels a lot like Sinatra, the Ruby framework for web development, which means that it looks and feels a lot like Rails also, because Sinatra and Rails are some kind of relatives. So if you come from Ruby web development, you will feel at home, or well, like in some relatives' house, which is good enough. And uh, for accessing the database, there is a SQLite database for storing all the information. We use DBAX class, which is an um, object relational mapping system. It's widely used in, in PER. And in this OS Auto Inspire, it's all about QEMU, of course, because it's basic, basically a wrapper, a wrapper around QEMU to run QEMU with different uh, uh, configuration and send cane strokes and read the screen to compare the screen with the expected uh, result. 
And for this matching of what you have on the screen and what you did expect, really, we use OpenCV. It's a, a great, a really great library for, uh, for uh, it, we only use it for fuzzy image matching, but can be used for image processing for almost everything. It's really cool. So if you already know that or you are already aware that you will learn all of this during the process of contributing, just go to GitHub. As I said, we have this OS Auto Ins organization. There you will see the repositories, the one for OpenQA itself, one for the Auto Ins part. And there is a document explaining how you should install everything directly from the repositories, how to set up everything. If you simply want to go the fast lane or see how it works first, there are also packages in OBS. The packages are built directly from these repositories. Um, it's the package we use to deploy in production openqa.openSUSE.org. So if you go to software.openSUSE.org and look for OpenQA, you will have exactly the same that the production server does. You can use it just to check if your handmade installation looks like it should. And as I said, go to progress. And, I don't know, something lost here? No? Okay. And go to progress.org. This is uh, the Redmine uh, instance we use for within our team for coordinating our daily work. It's also used by the admin team. So every time you write a mail to admin at opensource.org, it creates an issue there. And the admin team coordinates in this Redmine. And also the board have a project there for coordinating. So you will find a project there called OpenQA v2. The URL is OpenQA v3, historical reasons, OK? But, um, and there, as I said, you have this special version with all the easy hacks. You have the direct URL there. And I will just name a few of those tasks that maybe are interesting to start with. For example, we are missing pagination in the job listing because we really test a lot of combination for every ISO, which means that we have a lot of tests there waiting for people to see the results or just waiting to be uh, just scheduled to be run. So um, this listing is uh, all the sorting and everything is done by JavaScript. So it's you don't really need to go too deep into, into OpenQA to add pagination to it because the component we're using already have some support for pagination, but you can also implement it server side and go one step further. It's quite an easy task to get in contact. Um, the, also, if there is a scheduled job on this list and you click on it, you see almost no useful information. It's not a big problem for us, but it's kind of ugly. So it's also a, a good uh, a good task to to get introduced to the to how the templates are rendered and everything. Um, we also have a workers view that lists all the workers that are running. So we if some worker dies for some reason we are aware of it, but uh, right now it's quite hidden because there is no good place in the in in the current layout to put the link to this worker view. And on the other hand, we have a front page with a lot of boxes saying to be implemented, to be not yet implemented yet. So the idea will be to, to rescue, rescue this hidden list and put it in one of those fancy boxes in the front page. It's a good task because you will see all the, the whole stack from the um, the server side looks like you will see a already written list of workers with everything already done, but you will have to really understand it in order to move it to be a component on, on a, an area of another page. So it also looks like a good task to start if you are really want. And finally, the setup, as you will see, if you attend to the workshop about writing your own test, the setup is sometimes it's not completely straightforward, so you have to do several steps in order to have everything running. And we really want to change that. If you use the package, it will do most of the work, but we really want to have something that if you just clone the GitHub repository, you have something, a script, or simply a web page and a wizard 
it's up to you something that the first time you run OpenQA, you get it all the database initialization and everything already done in an easy way. Also, if you really are interested in to deploying it, that will be also a perfect task. And there are several other tasks there, but going through the whole list makes no much sense. So that's mainly all the content. So now it's up to you to make questions. Uh, don't forget that uh, half of the people involved in OpenQA development is here. So if you are watching the presentation on broadcast, sorry, you missed the opportunity, but if you are here in the room, you have three days to just contact us and ask anything you need to know. Um, that's all. So. And since this is the last tag of the day, I save you more than 10 minutes. <laughs> According to my clock. We have a question over there. Hello. Uh, there used to be issues with one uh, open source uh, release when there was a not working mem test. I don't know if you remember this, uh, but uh, I am uh, curious how I covered the tests uh, which are not installation but are on the DVD like a mem test. If they are working well and uh, if there is no problem with that. Well, not all tests are only about uh, installation. In fact, we also test the live system. So we have a test for the installation process, and then we reboot the virtual machine and check that everything is working. And we have the same for the live system, so we run the, the, the distribution live and check that it has network access. You can perform a SSH to yourself, and you can, mm -hmm. that the most applications are there, this kind of things are already covered. We are working on covering also updates, so um, um, installations in, uh, with, with with Windows on the same machine and this kind of thing. So, in fact, everything that can be run in a machine can be tested, but yeah, we are also testing that. And the mem test as well. The mem test, you know, there is uh, one of the menu boot, it's yeah, called mem test. And we don't have it. We have a test for mem test? Oh, huh? we have one. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, when there is a red screen, uh, there is a problem. Okay. Hello. Uh, is it a, a generic tool? Do, do you uh, can you test any distribution, anything that boots? Basically, it's not just OpenSSE or. Do you have some stuff in the background that connects with the OpenQA or? Okay. Uh, if I have so someone to bring me the mic. Um, the, in general, the OpenQA framework is not specific to OpenSUSE. The tests are, of course, OpenSUSE specific, and there are some tweaks necessary for OpenSUSE, for example, how much memory you need for the VM for specific tests, that might be different. And I think it was ported to Fedora, to Debian, and to, the, so even tests are running for these distributions, and lately for, what's the new name of Mandriva? Uh, Magea, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, and of course they are, of different quality because you need to maintain the tests to the distribution, but in general the framework of the of the things are not specific to open source. Uh, and how does uh, the test configuration look like? Is it some kind of uh, XML or something like that or <laughs> Or it's just when code, I said code. when I said that everything is per code, I meant okay. everything <laughs> is per okay. code. Everything is per code. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>